Ladies and gentlemen of the Shred Gamer Silicon video, I'd like to clarify the NVIDIA GTX 960 specifications. So, the leaks that we reported on just a couple of days ago are pretty much accurate. There is very little in them that is not 100% correct. But, so rather than doing a whole new article and so on, I'd rather just provide this video just to clarify a few points. And also to go over a detail that NVIDIA are using for marketing that I don't 100% agree with. But first of all, let's provide clarification. So the number of CUDA cores, the TDP of the card, uh, CUDA cores are 1024, the TDP is 120, one 6-pin power connect uh, connector, 2 gigabytes of RAM on a 128-bit bus, uh, even the base clock is a little lower than what we originally anticipated. It's 1,127 and boosts up to 1,178. Pretty much all of that is what we expected. Um, to put it into a very simple context, you can take the GTX 980 and half the specifications, for example, half the memory bus, half the amount of RAM, half the CUDA cores, and so on, and you're basically there. That's the GTX 960. But, there is a bit of an oddity. The effective memory clock speed NVIDIA are actually marketing this card with, and I don't really agree with this, and I'll tell you why in a moment, but the effective memory clock speed, the efficient memory clock speed, is being labelled at 9.3 GHz, um, which is considerably higher, you might recall, than... 1753, which obviously is uh, the actual, if you times 1753, I'm just doing it with you just for the sake of the lols, even though we all know the answer, it's 7012 megahertz, right? So what the hell is going on there? Well, to, to basically simplify this, you might remember that the Maxwell architecture has some differences in terms of the efficiency. Um, so what they are doing now is they are advertising the memory clock speed after it's been um, increased, as you will, via the improvements in bandwidth efficiency. So in other words, there's now color compression, delta compression, uh, which is the third generation, and some other bits and bobs. And so NVIDIA are now saying, well, because of this stuff, um, it's 33% more efficient than Kepler, so they're actually classifying that as clock speed. And I kind of don't like that, if I'm totally honest. Um, there are a couple of reasons behind that. One, it's confusing as hell to customers. Um, and I'm sure you could probably figure that out. But first of all, if we were to look at Tonga, that also has, according to AMD, that has about 40% improvement in efficiency, technically in memory bandwidth. And that, that does tally up to what my personal benchmarking has done with the R9 285 versus the R9 280. Um, you can definitely tell that despite the fact that memory bus has shrunk, the performance is roughly the same. You can even... Uh, play around with the clock speeds of the memory, you can see that the card isn't really memory bandwidth starved. We're talking about the 285 here compared to the 280. Um, that's not to say that it's 100%, uh, but, you know, sometimes a real clock speed is definitely better than improvements in efficiency, but for the most part, they're pretty interchangeable. But AMD didn't say, well, this is effectively a 384-bit memory bus, right? Um... Now, there have been PR rank uh, ratings, if you will, before. Back in the earlier days of the Athlon, uh, for example, the Barton course, if you were to look, you might get a situation where it would have, like, 2600 plus, but the actual clock speed would be... I can't remember the actual clock speed of a 2600 plus, which is really awful. I think it was, like, 1.8 or 2 gigahertz. If AMD did that to, for lack of a better word counter the marketing hype that Intel had regarding clock speed because back then clock speed was king. The Pentium 4, the clock speed kept on going up thanks to the net burst architecture and so it made a great deal of sense. The problem I've got however with this is that two things. One, they haven't done it for the rest 
of the Maxwell architecture. Uh, in other words, the GTX 980, which has, as far as I understand anyway, exactly the same improvements to memory bandwidth performance. In fact, I'm almost positive it does, because the memory bandwidth of the GTX 980 is actually lower than, let's say, the GTX 780 Ti. So, there's that, which leads to dis some discrepancy there, because ignoring the bus, if you were to just look purely at the memory bandwidth, um, you know, the actual memory clock speed, shall I say, there's, you start running into like a head-scratching moment if you don't understand the PR side of things. The second problem is, let's just say Bob. Let's, let's take Bob, the, I don't really know much about PCs, but I game occasionally, person. In other words, he's the average retail customer. He might get his friend to install the GPU for him, maybe he's confident enough to do it himself, but either way, eventually Bob loads up GPU-Z or finds the clock speed of his application uh, through, through some application and says, hey, uh, why is it telling me that the effective memory here is like 7,000 megahertz? What happened to my other, what happened to the remainder? It's not like, you know, it's a couple of megahertz here and there, which sometimes you can see on like an FSB, uh, you know, like where it's 2,999.7, uh, you know, megahertz. This one is like quite substantial. You know, when you start hitting over two gigahertz difference, people are going to start noticing and that's where people are going to start scratching their head. And so I don't, I don't really like that. I don't particularly think it's dishonest, uh, but I also don't really like that direction. I would prefer companies to just be more honest and say the effective mem the core clock, the memory clock speed is X, but you know, and then maybe put another little thing saying that which would be compared to XXX clock speed of the Kepler. I think that would confuse customers less. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my opinions on it. However, we're going to move away from that just for a second because I, I know that some people are probably going to be a little, um, you know, want to know about some other stuff. And they are pointing out that we're going to be seeing improvements on performance. But the problem I've had um, is that they're actually utilizing the GTX 660 for comparisons, both in the 140 watt versus 120 watt, in other words, power efficiency, and they're also comparing it to 1080p gaming, which I have a bit of a problem with. Um, basically, they're running just a variety of different tests. It's literally not even anything worth showing in these slides, but they're just basically doing an average across multiple different games, and the GTX 660 is running, uh, getting about 37 frames a second, and the GTX 960 hits about 60. I have a problem with that because it's compared to like a GTX 660. I would prefer for them to have compared it to something a bit more modern. Like maybe a GTX 770 or a GTX 760 or both. And kind of give us, a, uh, you know, what it's going to be like there. So what's my opinion? Well, so far I'm unsure. I mean, some people are even wondering if the GTX 960, because no one can seem to find the SLI connectors at the moment, but I guess we're just going to have to wait on that one. As personally, I, I don't think it's going to be a bad card, um, but I don't think it's incredibly astounding. My initial opinions, because the, the NDA for this thing, just so that you're all aware, is not going to end until January the 22nd. So that's when you're going to start seeing uh, reviews popping up. Um, <clears throat> but my opinions on the card, it's, it looks pretty nice, to be totally honest. But unless it's really competitive in terms of the pricing... Um, and I'm not really sure if it is, but at the moment the MSRP is still to be confirmed, then we're just going to have to wait. But I personally would be considering just kind of holding off anyway and seeing what uh, AMD release for their cards. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get going. Take care. Bye for now.